the previous lectures uh, we were trying to understand uh, how we can provide uh, quality of service guarantees uh, to various traffic sources. Okay. Now, uh, first we saw that the traffic sources are essentially statistical in nature. Now, if we have to provide quality of service guarantees to the traffic sources which are essentially uh, statistical in nature, then in order to get a full statistical multiplexing gain, we had earlier suggested a hypothetical admission control where each source specifies its probability distribution function uh, uh, that is the probability that its bitrate uh, you know varies and if we knows uh, these uh, probability distributions of all the traffic sources then we can determine the probability distribution of the multiplexed source and from that we can determine what is the probability that the multiplexed bitrate will exceed uh, the output link bitrate and from that we can determine uh, what is the probability of the packet loss. Uh, then we saw that uh, since it is not feasible for each traffic source uh, to characterize its uh, probability distribution function, we said okay, let us consider uh, some kind of a deterministic uh, traffic descriptors and the ATM forum has specified uh, these deterministic traffic descriptors uh, in terms of uh, the peak cell rate uh, or the sustained cell rate, the bus tolerance and the cell delay variation tolerance. And we saw that these traffic descriptors can be ensured by some kind of a leaky bucket or a generalized cell rate algorithm GCRA T tau. So what essentially we are trying to do is that a source which is basically statistical in nature, we are trying to uh, constrain the, uh, the source by putting some kind of a traffic shaper or a leaky bucket shaper in front of the traffic source such that the output conforms to a certain peak cell rate, certain average cell rate or sustained cell rate, certain bus tolerance and cell delay variation tolerance. Now, uh, it is a different matter that how a source uh, chooses the values of these peak cell rates, average cell rate, burst tolerance and cell delay variations that accurately captures the statistical behavior of the traffic source. That is a different matter, but suppose we put these traffic shapers in front of a traffic source which is statistical in nature, then by looking at these parameters of the peak cell rate, the average cell rate, the burst tolerance and the cell delay variation tolerance, the network can determine whether the call can be accepted or not. And we formulated this problem in the following way that suppose that there are n traffic sources, each of these traffic source can be characterized by the GCRA T tau algorithm by GCRA T tau parameters. Let us say that there are n sources, each of these has parameters as T1 tau 1, T2 tau 2, Tn tau n. Then we ask this question or we pose this problem that how many such number of traffic sources can be admitted that is what is the value of n okay, such that uh, the delay when, when they are served by a FIFO scheduler with a certain transmitter uh, uh, rate uh, which is transmitting let us say C ATM packets per unit of time, then what is the maximum number of sources that can be multiplexed such that the maximum delay is bounded by you know certain tolerable value. And we found out that this problem can be posed in terms of ensuring that we can admit as many number of sources such that the sum of the effective bandwidths of each of these GCRA T tau parameters is less than or equal to the output uh, link rate or the transmitters uh, uh, you know link rate which is uh, we have assumed it to be in our formulations to be C uh, ATM packets or ATM cells uh, 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 per unit of time. Uh, now, then we again came back uh, uh, to our original uh, thing that essentially a traffic source is uh, statistical in nature. Uh, so, can we define uh, something like the effective bandwidth uh, of a source? Okay. Uh, now, we ask this question that let us say that there is uh, one FIFO uh, scheduler, first in first out kind of a scheduler, there is a buffer okay, and a traffic source uh, is uh, which is statistical in nature is uh, uh, transmitting into this buffer and uh, this uh, buffer is having a FIFO scheduler which is scheduling at a certain 
certain rate of uh, say c atm cells uh, uh, per unit of time uh, or c bits uh, per unit of time uh, you know whatever uh, may be uh, the the formulations uh, equations then we ask this question that uh, can we define uh, the buffer occupancy distribution of this uh, we solve this problem uh, for a very simple uh, traffic uh, source characterizations uh, which is by assuming that the traffic source is a marco modulated fluid a marco modulated fluid means that uh, the rate at which the traffic source is uh, uh, transmitting depends upon the state okay and uh, uh, this state is essentially evolving as uh, some kind of a continuous time uh, markov chain so the rate at which the source will be pumping bits into this or will be pumping fluid into this buffer depends upon the state of the underlying uh, markov chain so that is why we are saying that this underlying markov chain is essentially modulating okay it's a markov modulated uh, fluid so this underlying markov chain is essentially modulating uh, the rate at which uh, the traffic source is transmitting and then uh, it, it was uh, we saw that uh, we can actually characterize the buffer occupancy distribution and we can ask this question that what is the probability that a buffer occupancy exceeds uh, certain uh, uh, you know uh, uh, certain uh, 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 certain value say x okay now uh, essentially you know we were interested in finding out what is the probability uh, that uh, the fluid will be lost okay or the packets or bits will be uh, dropped now uh, to find out this we actually need to determine that uh, what is the probability uh, that the, uh, our finite buffer actually becomes full for most of the problems uh, uh, or for most of the traffic sources uh, it can be shown uh, that if we consider another problem where we assume that uh, the buffer is basically infinite in nature and we ask this problem that what is the probability that uh, the buffer occupancy distribution exceeds a certain value is equivalent to saying that if we have a finite buffer with that value then what is the probability that this buffer will overflow so even though in practice we are interested in finding out okay what is the probability of a finite buffer getting overflowed we will solve or we will address this problem for the case when the buffer is infinite but we are asking this question that what is the probability that the buffer occupancy distribution will exceed a certain value then we pose this problem that if this is indeed true that uh, uh, if, if this is indeed needs to be formulated that what is the probability that the buffer occupancy distribution exceeds a, a certain uh, value uh, then how this buffer occupancy distribution evolves and we found out that for marco modulated fluid this buffer occupancy distribution uh, decays uh, exponentially okay so uh, so uh, uh, from this now we will try to find out uh, uh, what is then the effective bandwidth of a source okay now uh, for now if you need to really find out the effective bandwidth of a source uh, or rather if you need to find out the buffer occupancy uh, distribution then it naturally depends upon the uh, uh, statistical characterization of the traffic sources and for most of the statistical characterization of the traffic sources except for some simple models like markov modulated fluids or on off markov traffics uh, uh, it is very difficult to determine the buffer occupancy distribution uh, for an underlying traffic source characterizations okay however it has been found that if we assume that if the buffer you know if the buffer uh, length is very large then for most of the traffic sources it can be shown that so if you assume that here is our buffer now this buffer is having a scheduler which is transmitting let us say at c cells per unit of time right okay now when the buffer size is when the buffer size is uh, when the buffer size is large then for many arrival streams so for large buffer size 
okay for large buffer size for many arrival streams it can be shown that the probability that x is greater than certain b okay what is x x is the q length or the buffer length this is this is x this is evolving okay uh, this probability that the buffer length is greater than b is can be approximated as e raised to power minus b into some ic okay now where i is an increasing function of the transmitter rates okay so i is an increasing function of the transmitter rate ic is an increasing function of c and obviously it depends upon the traffic source now uh, so this uh, uh, this of course you know this form the exact form uh, depends really upon the traffic source okay and uh, we had actually uh, uh, seen it for the uh, marco modulated fluids but if you assume that b is very large okay and for many arrival streams for for most of the traffic characteristics it can be shown that uh, this uh, buffer occupancy distribution will behave uh, you know uh, like this now what really we want is that uh, uh, ic you know should be large enough okay so what really we need is that uh, this ic you know should be large enough should be large enough so that this quantity e raised to power minus b into ic is very small okay. now you can see here is we want that this quantity should be very small okay so that the probability that uh, x exceeds b is, is is sort of very small because this actually will determine the packet loss rate okay now let us say that the this target value of this function ic is some delta then we can write that the probability that x is greater than b is actually equal to e raised to power minus beta delta now uh, it can be shown that for many continuous and discrete arrival processes okay um, uh, and through a very complex uh, analysis uh, uh, you know the following result actually can be proved okay and let me just tell you uh, that uh, what we can actually prove although i am not giving you the uh, detailed proof of this i'm just trying to tell you the sketch of the proof to drive home this point that for uh, a situation where there is a buffer and this buffer is being served by a transmitter which is transmitting at a certain fixed rate okay and the statistical nature of the traffic source uh, means that the buffer occupancy evolves statistically we are interested in finding out the what is the probability that a buffer overflows so basically that is our 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 simple problem now we are saying that this is equivalent to saying that if this buffer was infinite buffer then we would like to ask this questions that what is the probability that a buffer occupancy will exceed a certain uh, value let us say b both these problems can be equivalent 
for most uh, of the traffic arrival processes and for most of the problem formulations even though the two problems are uh, uh, theoretically uh, different okay so we are now uh, 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 trying to ask these questions that how this buffer occupancy distribution uh, looks like and what i have just said is that, that for most of the uh, traffic arrival processes this buffer occupancy distributions actually uh, decays exponentially so it can be shown uh, that uh, that for many continuous and discrete arrival processes it can be shown that the limit b tends to infinity 1 upon b log of p x is greater than b is less than or equal to minus delta essentially we are trying to say that if b is extremely large then this result uh, will hold true okay so this is what this result is trying to say that if b is very large okay then you know uh, this result uh, will hold true provided provided okay if this buffer is shared by some j traffic sources okay then provided we have n k into alpha k delta is less than c okay where n k is the number of traffic sources of type k and alpha k delta is the effective bandwidth of source k. So, what we are trying to say is that if the sum of the effective bandwidths, you know, if the sum of the effective bandwidths is less than or equal to c, is less than c, then the loss rate okay the packet loss rate decays exponentially okay that is what we are trying to say we can also define the effective bandwidth in the other words we say that the effective bandwidth of a source is that rate with which if the transmitter serves then the packet loss rate will decay exponentially so the two definitions are equivalent now we'll try to see what exactly you know is the interpretation of the effective bandwidth now this alpha k uh, delta is actually given by so we are saying that this is the alpha delta which is the effective bandwidth this is equal to okay certain quantity okay which we defined it to be limit t tends to infinity 1 by t log of expected value of e raised to power delta a t this divide by delta now what is at here at denotes the number of bits or cells whatever may be the unit okay in t seconds so what we are trying to say is that in this result we can prove that for many continuous and discrete arrival processes this result 
will hold good provided this condition is satisfied where this alpha k delta for each individual traffic source is given by this quantity. Right? Now, to further get an insight into this alpha delta, we assume, let us say that this delta is very small. Let us say that delta is very less than 1. Then this quantity which is log of sorry this is not e raised to power minus delta this should be log of expected value of e raised to power delta a t can be approximated by log of 1 plus delta expected value of a t plus delta square by 2 expected value of a square t. We can approximate this quantity by this which can be further approximated as delta expected value of a t plus delta square by 2 expected value of a square t. Now, if you take limit t tends to infinity 1 by t, okay, then what do you get? You get an uh, alpha delta. That means alpha delta, if you substitute this into here, then alpha delta is approximately equal to limit t tends to infinity 1 by t expected value of a t plus limit t tends to infinity right 1 uh, 1 by 2 into delta into e raised to power a square t. Now, if you look at this, what is this? The expected value of a t is the average number of bits in the interval t. Divide by this t and then if you take the limit t tends to infinity, this gives you the notion of the average arrival rate. And this gives you the notion of limit t tends to infinity. Okay, uh, this is this should be a 1 by t also here. This gives you the notion of some kind of a dispersion. So, therefore, we write this alpha delta into the form as alpha delta is given by lambda plus 1 by 2 delta d square where we d we call this d square to be the dispersion so second second order movement and this is has the interpretation of the average arrival rate so what we are saying is that if our if our delta is very less than 1 then our alpha delta can be approximated by lambda plus 1 by 2 delta d square where lambda is the average arrival rate so the effective bandwidth okay is essentially determined uh, by the dispersion okay for small values of uh, uh, for small values of uh, uh, delta so what we are trying to say is that that if we now the small values of delta means what the small values of delta if you look at uh, this <coughs> you know this is this uh, delta limit b tends to infinity 1 by p uh, log of b uh, probability x greater than b now this if delta is, is very small then what it means is that we are willing to lose uh, quite a few cells uh, quite a few number of bits we are willing to lose if this is uh, the case uh, then what we are trying to prove is that the effective bandwidth will be largely determined uh, one by the average arrival rate and uh, around the average arrival rate uh, the dispersion that is the second order movement. However, 
if you make the delta to be large then we cannot have this approximations and in, uh, in that case you know the other higher order movements okay will also be uh, called into question so what essentially means is that that uh, this dispersion for the small values of delta okay this values of dispersion where we have said lambda plus 1 by 2 delta d square the small uh, values of for small values of delta this is actually capturing the burstiness of the traffic streams okay so this is basically capturing the uh, burstiness of the uh, traffic stream in other words uh, what uh, we have actually shown is that uh, so what is our conclusion our conclusion is that the effective bandwidth of a source is basically that rate with which the transmitter should serve such that the loss rate or the buffer overflow rate uh, decays uh, exponentially okay and uh, if we have certain target value of the packet loss rate uh, then uh, by uh, determining the effective bandwidth okay we can actually determine uh, how much uh, 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 bandwidth uh, we should reserve uh, in at a particular uh, node so therefore for this random bursty sources effective bandwidth uh, has the same notion which for a uh, constant bitrate source uh, its bitrate its constant bitrate or its peak rate uh, will have uh, uh, will have that uh, uh, notion so the two notions are actually uh, similar so effective bandwidth uh, play the same role which a uh, which a, uh, a constant bitrate will play the role in the case of a uh, constant bitrate uh, source so what does it mean uh, it means that if we have to provide uh, quality of service guarantees to the large number of the bursty uh, uh, traffic sources which are basically statistical in nature and all of these traffic sources are sharing a buffer okay and this buffer is being served by a transmitter with a constant uh, uh, transmission rate then in order to determine how many such number of sources can be comfortably uh, uh, admitted uh, such that the buffer overflow rate the packet loss rate does not exceed a certain tolerable value then uh, all the admission control has to determine uh, that the sum of the effective bandwidth of these traffic sources should be less than the uh, transmitter's capacity or the output uh, link rate or the output uh, 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 bit rate uh, of the uh, of this uh, transmitter link okay so that is all we need to determine and uh, therefore the admission control problem simply reduces to determining the effective bandwidth uh, of a traffic source uh, now uh, we can also uh, pose the uh, uh, the other problem that we had uh, earlier posed it of course in this problem also so now in this problem what we are assuming is that we are assuming that there is a buffer uh, the uh, whenever the combined output rate exceeds the link capacity then the packets will be buffered all we are assuming that either uh, the, uh, the packet loss rate does not exceed a certain tolerable value or the delay uh, does not exceed uh, a certain uh, allowable value so that is what we can ensure by, by uh, uh, giving quality of service guarantees when we have a buffer now uh, we earlier also considered that let us assume that there is no buffer that means uh, uh, these sources really uh, want uh, uh, no delays but maybe they can tolerate certain packet loss so basically there is no buffer but only multiplexing is there so the other case is uh, at other extreme uh, there is no buffer but there is a multiplexing now in that case uh, we need to determine how many such sources we can multiplex such that you know the packet loss rate uh, remains below a uh, certain value now to determine that uh, i had earlier uh, 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 you know said that we can determine provided we know uh, the uh, traffic characteristics of these uh, uh, sources uh, that is their that is their complete uh, distribution functions however in practice again it is not uh, possible to determine so one way uh, that has been suggested in the literature is to apply some kind of a, uh, a bound uh, on on these uh, 
uh, multiplexed uh, output rate. So let me just uh, tell you one such example uh, of uh, that bound and uh, then we will conclude uh, this discussion by throwing some light on how these things can be actually done in practice because uh, 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 you know it, 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 it turns out uh, that if you have to have a uh, real statistical multiplexing gain then the traffic characterization uh, of a source uh, in some form of the other is required in order to actually capture uh, the uh, full statistical multiplexing gain and unfortunately uh, to have the complete traffic characterizations in whatever forms you know in whatever forms is difficult in practice so i will just uh, uh, throw some light on how the things can be done in practice for admitting you know these number of uh, uh, sources So uh, let me just now illustrate you the case of uh, multiplexing. We had considered the case of buffering uh, where uh, uh, we try to determine the effective bandwidth uh, or uh, you know try to uh, explain the concept of effective bandwidth. Now let me just uh, explain you uh, the case of uh, multiplexing. Okay? Now multiplexing without buffering. Okay? So let me just call it. Uh, e even in the case of buffering, there is a multiplexing, but we are now talking of multiplexing without buffering. So, what I am saying is multiplexing, you know, without buffering. Okay. Now, the objective of this multiplexing, okay. Uh, what is the objective of this multiplex? Now, remember this different uh, traffic sources are fluctuating randomly and you would like to reserve certain bandwidth for these traffic sources such that you know your packet loss rate is, is small. Okay? Now, of course, if you know the complete traffic characterization of the source in terms of a distribution function as we have seen earlier also the problem is very simple. But otherwise, since we do not know the complete traffic characterizations we have to reserve how much bandwidth typically we have to reserve the bandwidth very close to the average rate okay slightly more maybe more than slightly more than the average rate such that you know our packet loss rate is uh, is below a target limit okay so now let us say that we want to multiplex these n sources so so our problem essentially is that we want to multiplex these n sources whose bit rates are R1, R2, so on up to Rn. Okay. Now these bit rates are fluctuating randomly. However, we are assuming that each of these sources is stationary and therefore these bit rates uh, can be considered as random variables. And we are also assuming that these different traffic sources are heavy are independent and therefore we are considering the case of uh, an independent and identically distributed random variable. Now when we multiplex so we get y which is basically equal to r1 plus r2 plus rn. Now we want to determine this problem so we want to determine c such that the probability that this R1 plus R2 plus Rn that is our y is, is greater than C times n is less than or equal to certain target value let us call it delta. Okay? So that is what you know we want to determine. Now typically the value of this C will be slightly larger than the average rate of each traffic sources closer to the average rate. So there are n sources. So we want to ask this question that what is the probability that if we had reserved these c for each of these traffic sources then we have reserved total c into n uh, for all n traffic sources and we want to ask this question that what is the probability that the sum of these n rates is greater than that c times n is less than or equal to certain target value okay which we have put which may be 10 raised to power 9 10 raised to power uh, 10 raised to power minus 9 10 raised to power minus 8 10 raised to power minus 10 whatever is the quality of service 
attributes okay so now we can apply uh, the bahadur rao theorem for this so so now using Bahadur Rao theorem, it can be shown that the probability that R1 plus R2 plus Rn is greater than C times n is approximately equal to 1 upon root 2 pi sigma theta C root n e raised to power minus n into i c okay, where theta c is is achieving the maximum in this functions supremum of theta theta into c minus psi theta where what is psi theta psi theta is nothing but a logarithmic moment generating function expected value of theta r1 and sigma square is So, where theta c achieves the maximum or the supremum in, in this I c, psi theta is, is, is actually a logarithmic moment generating functions and sigma square is given by this. Okay. Uh, so, what does it mean is that if we know the logarithmic moment generating function. Um, you know if you know this quantity so if you know the traffic uh, characterization in such a manner that if you know this quantity then we can compute this and we can compute this and if we can compute this we can you know put into this and from that we can determine what is the value of c uh, which uh, satisfies a certain target limit which is uh, given uh, which is a delta so uh, uh, let us take uh, a simple example and that simple example is if we assume uh, that we have a Marco uh, on off source if you assume that we have a uh, Marco on off source uh, with the probability that the source is on is some p and the probability that the source is off is of 1 minus p and in the p on uh, the the peak rate of transmission is uh, some quantity uh, let's say r and when it is off it doesn't transmit anything then it can be shown uh, that uh, theta c is uh, 1 by r uh, log of c into 1 minus p upon p into r minus c I c is uh, given by the c by r uh, log of c into 1 minus p p into r minus c minus log of uh, r into 1 minus p upon r minus c and sigma square uh, is uh, given by c into r minus c. So, if you put all these quantities uh, mm, into here uh, you can uh, actually compute uh, uh, this probability distributions uh, uh, the bound on that and if we know this then uh, we can actually determine what is the value of c that uh, i have to choose such that if i have to multiplex n such sources uh, the packet loss rate is uh, you know uh, less than a certain quantity uh, just to give you a uh, 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 so, so basically, you know, we can uh, determine all these quantities if you have a Marco uh, 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 on-off sources. So, what does it mean that even in this case, we at least need to have 
certain characterization uh, of the traffic source. Uh, if we have a characterization of the traffic source, we can apply uh, the Bahadur Rao uh, theorem and then we can determine uh, that how much uh, uh, bandwidth must be reserved uh, per source uh, such that uh, uh, you know such that the packet loss rate uh, is bounded by certain achievable or a uh, target value. Uh, so uh, uh, in practice however uh, you know um, the question really is that how do you apply these techniques in practice. In practice one can also do some kind of an uh, online estimations or online measurements. Uh, what one can do as I have said is that one can start by reserving the bandwidth based on the peak rates and uh, initially and when the traffic sources actually start transmitting the data one can make online measurements on the traffic sources and then apply the Bahadur Rao uh, theorem uh, to uh, actually determine what is the uh, uh, you know value of C uh, which is actually uh, uh, closer uh, to the average rate of these uh, various fluctuating uh, traffic sources. So uh, in practice really what will be done is that since we, do no, we, we may not be knowing uh, the uh, a priori traffic characterization uh, of the source one can actually be uh, more conservative by admitting the users based on the peak rates and then one can do an online uh, measurements uh, and then apply either the Bahadur Rao theorem or uh, even the Gaussian uh, approximations that we had considered in the previous lectures uh, uh, to the uh, combined uh, output uh, source. Now, uh, so, so, so we have considered now the two scenarios, uh, let me just briefly summarize that. The two scenarios are, one is the case of a scenario where we are multiplexing uh, these various sources which has no buffer and therefore they cannot tolerate any delay, there will be zero delays. But we want to ask this question that how many such sources can be multiplexed such that the packet loss rate is a certain tolerable limit. So that was one scenario. The other scenario was that these sources can tolerate certain delays okay and however the and therefore they can be uh, buffered but since these buffers are also finite when this buffer overflows or the buffer exceeds a certain limit there will be a packet loss and we want to limit that we want to limit the maximum delay or the q length average q length and we also want to limit the probability of these buffer overflow then we ask this question that how many of these sources can be multiplexed of course one can consider a combination of these multiplexing with bufferings and uh, and, and and so on and can determine you know how many such number of sources can be uh, multiplex but as we have seen that in both these cases either we apply uh, the central limit theorem that the uh, the combined uh, traffic characterization looks like a gaussian or a normal uh, probability distribution function or we apply the bahadur rao theorem on the one hand on the other hand in the case of buffering we try to determine the effective bandwidth of a traffic source in both these cases we need to know the traffic characterization of a uh, source uh, which in general uh, is difficult to achieve in practice. So what is done uh, in practice? Uh, the best thing that can be done in practice is to follow a certain kind of a uh, deterministic approach and the ATM forum has suggested that uh, that deterministic approach can be done by bounding you know by bounding the peak rate, the average rate, the burst tolerance and the cell delay variation tolerance of these source. So we can bound that uh, and uh, so therefore for that we need to put some kind of a shaper in front of a traffic source and the shaper that has been suggested by the ATM forum standards is a leaky bucket shaper. So what you do is that a traffic source which is essentially statistical in nature you put a leaky bucket shaper in front of the traffic source and make sure that the output of these leaky bucket traffic shaper conforms to the peak cell rate, the average cell rate, the burst tolerance and the cell delay variation tolerance and then the network determines uh, you know whether uh, by admitting these uh, such uh, deterministically bounded traffic deterministically bounded traffic whether the sources can be multiplexed or not okay so uh, in practice basically uh, what uh, we are doing is uh, we are putting okay so here is a, a traffic source here is a traffic source this traffic source passes uh, 
through a a GCRA T tau and here is an ATM traffic. Uh, so this now goes to some kind of an uh, you know uh, ATM ATM network. Okay. Uh, now this makes sure this uh, this makes sure that this traffic source is now confirming to the GCRA T tau parameters. Now inside, if you look at if this is an ATM node, if this is an ATM node, then this ATM node, if you expand this, will look something like this. That each of these ATM node will put a, a GCRA T tau monitor. and this will be a multiplexer buffer buffering so this is so while this this gcra t tau which has been put in front of the traffic source we can call it to be a uh, traffic shaper or a regulator traffic regulator or a shaper and this gcra t tau parameter which we have put at the network node so this is this is the node atm node so this is my atm node where i have put this gcra t tau pair is is actually a a traffic pleaser or a monitor now this is uh, making sure that this traffic source is conforming to these gcra t tau parameters okay uh, this is necessary because otherwise the traffic source might just remove this gcra t tau parameters and may start sending data uh, which is violating the advertised traffic contract so this is how we put and then you know uh, the node determines uh, how many of these uh, traffic sources like from 1 to n can be admitted so basically the node determines what is the value of n now the question really is that uh, we just uh, spend some time on this traffic source now if you uh, look at this then now this traffic source essentially is a statistical in nature and this traffic regulator is making sure that the output of this traffic regulator is conforming to this advertised traffic contracts t and tau so now what is the situation here the situation here is that here is a traffic source which is uh, transmitting uh, you know these cells and they may uh, pass so this traffic gcra t tau is essentially a leaky bucket and as we had considered this leaky bucket has a depth of p plus tau the fluid is accumulating at a unit rate okay and then the sources is, is 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 transmitting okay and it has a it is a bucket depth of t plus tau now the question really is that that whenever an atm cell comes and if it finds that uh, there are not enough fluid in the bucket the cell will have to be buffered here so the the, the way in which it will work is that whenever a cell comes uh, it takes away capital t units of fluids and if a cell comes and if it finds that the bucket it does not have enough fluid that is capital T units of fluid it will be buffered okay so note that this regulator or shaper is basically you know changing the traffic characteristics also to uh, to suit the output of t and tau parameter so the question really is that what are the what are the values of t and tau that a source should select where ultimately what is happening is that there is a delay at the source side itself right so what is happening really is that a traffic source is statistical in nature you are putting some kind of a traffic regulator or shaper such that the output of the traffic regulator conforms to this parameters but what are those parameters how does the source determine that these parameters are such that that a delay which will happen in the buffer right at the leaky bucket is not so high it should not distort the traffic characteristics completely okay so what are those values of the t and tau uh, parameters okay now typically it is very difficult to determine the values of t and tau parameters um, the network what will do is that will offer to a source a certain range of parameters of t and tau and from which 
uh, the traffic source uh, will be expected to uh, choose from these uh, range of parameters and then uh, the network uh, uh, or the source can determine that what parameters uh, suits it in in terms of uh, both the pricing and the and the distortion uh, uh, and the distortion that a traffic source uh, uh, will uh, will suffer because each of these parameters uh, may have a certain cost associated with it the calls may be priced based on the traffic descriptors and also the quality of service attributes okay so the pricing uh, of a call in a quality of service environment will be a function of both the traffic descriptors as well as uh, you know the quality of service uh, attributes okay so by uh, a combination of uh, the distortion that a traffic will undergo uh, if you put a traffic regulator or sh uh, shaper and the pricing uh, of the call which a network is offering uh, a source will be able to determine or will be able to judge what parameters uh, it should uh, choose you know the t and tau uh, 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 so that uh, uh, you know you can also achieve a statistical multiplexing gain from the network's uh, point of view uh, at the same time you can achieve quality of service guarantees and also at the same time the traffic distortion which is occurring by putting this regulator uh, is uh, is minimum